please like and subscribe. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your reading. All right, Cancer. So I'm feeling called to do a four card spread. Uh, this is a you versus your person. Sometimes I do four card spread. Sometimes I do a nine card spread. Just depending on, on the energies. We are still in the midst of the Aquarius full moon, which is supposed to be one of the most intense full moons of the entire year. It's like a super moon, they're calling it. Beautiful. Okay, Cancer. Cancer, I could be picking up on your energy or on the energy of someone who's in your energy. So if it doesn't feel like I'm speaking about you, please switch the energies around. Okay, and you're going to probably get your own messages as you connect with the cards. Absolutely, please. I encourage you to connect with the cards and listen to your own intuition. Creator, please bless this reading for cancer. Please bring in the knowledge and the wisdom of the Most High. Holy Spirit of the Most High, please bless this reading for cancer. Please bring in the knowledge and the wisdom of the Most High. Only, only the knowledge and the and wisdom of the Most High is welcome here. Thank you. on the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Cups. Okay, so the Knight of Cups, there's a lot of disappointment about a relationship. Okay, so what's going on here is somebody has stepped onto the path of their destiny, their birthright. C cancer, did you step, did you recently take the path of your, of your destiny, Cancer? Did you recently step onto the path of your destiny, into the path of your heart, into what you're most aligned with? What does that mean? With what gives you joy? What would you do that you would do if no one paid you to do it? What would you do if like, it's just your favorite thing to do? You love to do this. That is what your destiny is. That is what aligned, it is aligned within your destiny. So you or somebody else, Cancer, has aligned themselves with their destinies, their, their sense of destiny. The other person, Cancer, is feeling a sense of disunion. There has been an unbalanced and unresolved imbalance of power between you oh my god oh god this is multi-dimensional help me say this creator <sighs> okay there is an unresolved imbalance of power between you Cancer, this is between you and someone in your life, specific to you, Cancer. There has been and 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 specific to them, whoever is in your life. This is this is this dynamic that I'm saying. An unresolved imbalance of power is specific to you and specific to the person who you're in a relationship with. And they know there is an unresolved imbalance of power relative to you. 
but I'm getting as I see this card in reverse that there's been a breakup or the friendship has ended or the union has come to an end. The friendship, the union, the whatever it is, the, the relationship has run its course, has, has ended. And while this person is still stuck in an unresolved imbalance of power, the irony of this, and that's why I was like, oh no, how do I explain this? Is because you've moved on and you are flourishing. You are flourishing. Yes, you have a sense of disappointment about the fact that your relationship with this person didn't work out. But I'm getting here that there is a sense of dishonesty between the two of you within this person or within you. Okay, so this is your energy, Cancer, and this is your person's energy, or this is your energy, and this is your person's energy. Maybe your person aligned themselves with their destiny and left you in an unresolved imbalance of power that you're aware of. Now you see this that your person's moved on. Now you see your person has healed from this unresolved imbalance of power that you're still standing in. Whoever this is is still standing in this relative to the other person. There hasn't been an, uh, a demonstration of closure. There has not been a demonstration that this issue, this power issue has not been resolved. I don't feel there's been a demonstration of closure to this power issue. Okay, so the fact that these two cards uh, symbolize you or your person, these two cards, this card symbolizes the illuminated dynamics between you, Cancer, the illuminated dynamics that you're both aware of. You both know, you both see, you're both aware of. These dynamics are the shadow dynamics that you're not aware of. Okay? So when the illuminated dynamics, Cancer, everybody knows, you know and your person knows that somebody, one of you has proven everybody wrong. You have defied prophecy. You have defied, I'm hearing even defied gravity. Not literally, but symbolically. You've shifted your life. Somebody has shifted their life. And I'm feeling it's this person that stepped into their destiny has shifted their life. They've defied gravity. They have shocked the tribe, shocked the group, surprised the group. Nobody expected this person to do what they did and land in their destiny, land in their birthright, <sighs> land in the Ten of Pentacles energy. I'm getting inheritance, like birthright. Yeah, this, but you've changed, whoever this is, who, whatever has happened here, the dynamics have shifted. People can see that somebody has changed. Somebody in the relationship has shifted in a way that nobody expected. Somebody in the relationship has taken action in a way that nobody expected. You know, because this is pinnacle. This is this is this is here and now, baby. This is here and now. This isn't uh, you thought about it and you dreamt about it and you really wanted to do it, but you didn't do it. No, you did it. You did it. You shifted your dynamic. You shocked the group, defying prophecy. I'm feeling that the group feels foolish. They feel like they've got egg on their face. They feel foolish. Like they put you, they put someone into a box. Ooh, ooh. Okay, see the crater does these twists of consciousness so much. Like they're like, the creator showing me that the group feels like the, the group 
made somebody live in a box. I'm feeling that somebody is you. They made you live in a box and this box was not your box. It was their box. Maybe it wasn't even their box, but they believed it's their box and they handed this box over to you and said, okay, now it's your box. But you're like, but that wasn't my box. So that's never your box either. But they didn't see that. They believe, they still believe it's their box. So they want you to live inside this box and this box is very little. It's very narrow. It's very tight. It's hard to breathe. You can't stand up. You can't move around. There's no movability. There's no flexibility. It's, it's like the role. The box is a role, a role in your life, a very rigid role. And you lived in this box. I'm feeling you even fulfilled this contract. Uh, you fulfilled this contract and healed from this contract. It's like you stood up in this box and shattered it. You stood up and broke out of this box. I'm seeing like, I'm hearing even like time and space, like, like, like violence of material tearing and like destruction, you know? Yeah, art and destruction, art and destruction, how new beginnings are created out of the out of the death of the old, out of destruction. I got so lost in the energy, I forget what I was even saying, but somebody, um, somebody has healed, somebody has healed. They have defied gravity, they have shocked the group, the group thought they were not going to change the group, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. The group wanted this person to live inside the box, this person lived inside the box, fulfilled the box, broke out of the box. The group now sees that this box was never yours and that you were never the one that was truly in the box. See, they, this group, okay, scapegoat, this, this group projected a lot of this box onto you and said it was your box. When it was something, it was theirs. It's not even a box. It's like a relationship to shadow that they were not ready to be initiated into. So they poured their shadow into you. You are now a shadow buster. You, are, you have been the scapegoat. I'm getting for many of you, you were the scapegoat of your family. Who chooses a role? When you think back way back to the ancient days when they had naming ceremonies, who who chooses the role? You know, the medicine man watches the children when they do a naming ceremony. The medicine man will watch the children, watch the children's behavior, watch what's around the children, how is life responding to the child, life itself through the animals, the people, nature, the environment, how is the environment responding to the child? How is the child responding to the environment? And with those dynamics to combine, the medicine man will come up with the name. So who does the naming? Is it the medicine man or the child? Is it the group? Because the child's name comes out of their dynamic with the group. So is the group determining that you are the scapegoat or are you determining? <sighs> because the dynamics of this turn out that you're some sort of a scapegoat to the group. But in that you hold the, you hold the wisdom of the shadow of the group that they themselves can't access Whew. but you can you can and you do and this is why you've proven people wrong they thought this shadow would destroy you they thought this darkness would crush you would destroy you devour you oh my gosh
and it didn't it strengthened you you are oof. okay but let's now swing down into the shadow dynamics so you surprise the group but what is the dynamics that you're not aware of is conflict competition rivalry So I'm feeling like, oh, interesting. I'm feeling like you or somebody else is projecting onto the relationship, even though I'm feeling for a lot of you, you're not in contact with, with each other, but I'm feeling like one of you, and it's probably you, is projecting a lot of love onto the relationship and assuming the other person is pining over you, assuming that the other person is like, in as much agony and anguish about the distance between you and the no communication between you as you are but what you're not of a, you're not aware of is the other person's sense of competition about you the other person's sense of conflict about you the other person's sense of rivalry with you They just said, they're so busy, this person's so busy competing with you that they don't even see you. And it's so true that when we love somebody, we are really blinded by our own love and we don't see, you know, it's like, I used to say this all the time when I would, you know, when you meet somebody and you see a spark within them, a spark of truth. You see the flame of truth burning inside of them and you connect because that's you. That's your flame. You understand this flame. You have the same flame and you're like, yay, yes, they have the same flame in them. But you see, they're not connected to this flame, but you are connected to this flame. So that's what you connect to this person is through their, is through their flame. But what happens, you see, is, is although you are so blinded by the light, blinded by your own relationship to the light, to the truth, that we often fail to see the monster staring us in the face, the demon staring us in the face, the abusive person staring us in the face. The person that's not ready to connect with their light. And this is what I'm seeing for you. You saw this in the other person. You saw their light. You saw their flame. You fell in love with it. But you realized that they were not, they couldn't see their flame. They didn't even know they even had a flame. And, and, and even when they did come into some sort of consciousness about it, they didn't value their flame. They were like, oh yeah, this? Oh yeah, whatever. And you're like, whatever, <sighs> that's my lifeline, that's my chi, that's my relationship to the divine, that's my pulse, that's my very jugular. You know, okay, we're going to do some clarification now. Creator, what is the Ten of Pentacles? 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 So yes, whoever this is, they definitely came to the end of a cycle. They were really scared about it. This end of a cycle caused this person a lot of anguish, a lot of worrying. But they found the best way through this is to get busy creating, get busy building. It's like the new energy is here. Don't waste it. The new energy. And, and, and even though you spent some time grieving, you spent some time worrying, you spent some time looking back at what you were letting go of. Can, 
sitting in the contemplation and consideration of what you were letting go of. But after a time that you sat in this energy with the cosmos supporting you. See the cosmos in here? You see? See all the signs of the cosmos. All the zodiac. Covering your legs. What are the legs? The roots. So while you're in a state of grief, there's work being done. There's work being done within your own roots that gives you the strength and the understanding that, you know, if you're really going to get out of this grief, you've got to get up and get building. Get building. Get collaborating with your highest self, collaborating with the people around you who you care about, who you want to build with. This brings you into a sense of wanting to forgive. I'm feeling you have Capricorn energy. There's some sort of Capricorn energy within you. But I'm feeling like um, um, you wanting to forgive a devil energy. Forgive some sort of, and even within yourself, your own attachment to a devil energy within you that gave a devil energy outside of you, power over you. Whether that's a person, whether that's an addiction, whether that's a job, a boss, a friend, a lover, a husband, a spouse, a child, a stranger in the street or at the market, at the grocery store, at the, uh, at the corner store, at the gas station whatever but some sort of devil energy within you had power over you outside of you and you forgive this energy within you and go into relationship with it and this is what brings you into your your destiny holy smoke I feel like I'm speaking to a real, like a, a magician, somebody who really is finishing the great work, somebody who really is crossing the abyss. Okay, new deck. Okay. Oh, and what's on the bottom of the deck? Okay, we're not going to do the bottom of the deck. I already started shuffling it. Okay, let's do it right now. What's on the bottom of the deck now? Was the Hierophant in reverse? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so this is some sort of family energy that felt like a god. A family energy that felt like a god that had power over you. Some sort of an attachment that had power over you within you and also outside of you. In the world. And now it's upside down. What is the Two of Cups creator? What is the Two of Cups? What is the Two of Cups? What is the Two of Cups creator? The Two of Cups. Okay. So this person sees that you're moving on. This person sees your success and they want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of it. They want to experience the same kind of um, Queen of Pentacles energy within themselves. You know, their sense of disunion with you, like I said, whatever attachment in, um, toward devil energy or attachment to lower energy, lower nature energies that have power over you in your life, inside of you, will also have power in power over you outside of you. It's the same thing with this person. They are in a place of disunion 
not only with you, but within themselves. That's why your relationship with this person has not come back together with you is because they are not in alignment with themselves. They are not into union. They are not into union with themselves. They are not in union. They are not in accordance with themselves. They are not in alignment with themselves. They're not even really friends with themselves. And they see that you are and feeling like it almost, it kind of, it baffles them. It baffles them. It baffles them that you have entered into a dimension of relationship with yourself. You have entered into a dimension with yourself that this person never thought was possible. They want what you have. Look at, they're facing towards you. They want what you have. They want to experience the reward of their hard work. They want to be the queen of pentacles. They want to experience their luxury, their sense of inner inner stability, inner abundance, inner love, inner richness, presence of mind within the fullness of yourself. You're not resisting part of yourself. You're, you are the empire of your soul. There's no part of your kingdom that you're scared of. There's no part of your kingdom that you are resisting or forbidden to access your, it's your kingdom. And this is what this person sees in you. This is what they want for themselves. But they're magician, they're, they're weak willed. They need to strengthen their will. If they're going to walk with you, they need to develop their joy. They've been avoiding conflicts. They've been in a state of avoidance. They have a great fear of change and fear of loss. That's partly why they don't align with you, with your energy and really do this work to align with you. They could do it. They could do it, but they're withholding themselves from this dimension because of their fear of change, because of their fear of losing what little they think they have. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so sad. Let's talk about somebody steeped in scarcity, not knowing that they are tapping into abundance just by letting go of what they have. Yeah, but the towers already happened. I feel like this person feels entrapped in themselves. They're going, but they've gone back to old behavior. Like there's an, a continued sense of oppression because they can't seem to follow you, but they want to. They want to follow you. You are a symbol of magic to this person. You are a symbol of power and of magic. Look at the queen of, look at the nine of pentacles looking straight at this wand. Everything else is in reverse, but there's a clear sight. Boom. The queen of pentacles looking straight at you. The nine of wands, the nine of pentacles looking straight at the wand and this wand is you. Look at the hand coming out of the sky. Can you see this? Yes, on the, okay, good. You can see it on the screen. The hand is the upper realm coming out of the sky with the wand indicative of magic. You are connected to some high, high voltage power. Maybe you cause miracles, many miracles make you, maybe you make, synchronicities happen but this person definitely sees that you are connected to something bigger than them and bigger than you and i just heard it intimidates the shit out of them because they're a control freak this person is a control freak 
And here we are, and are looking straight at this. And they're in a state of loss. Even though they have a fear of loss, they're cast into loss now. They're cast into loss because they're either going to lose you or they're going to lose what they're hanging on to. Either way, they are forced to face into loss. It's like the universe is telling them, make your choice. Make your choice. What do you choose? Do you choose to move forward with this person? Or do you choose to hang on to what no longer is serving you? Because both are going to affect you both are going to affect this person's <sighs> either way either way you're this person's heading into loss okay new deck what is the queen of pentacles creator in reverse the queen of pentacles in reverse the Queen of Pentacles in reverse, creator. The Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Am I taking that? No. Okay. Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Hmm. Here we go. Ace of Cups in reverse. Four of Cups, disconnection. Four of Cups on the bottom of the deck for this pile, disconnection. So yes, you have taken action in a way that, that nobody expected you to. One of you, somebody, and I'm feeling it's you, have taken action within this relationship that nobody expected you to. Just a second, it's really hot, I'll be right back. Okay, whew. Yeah, you stepped away from this relationship. You were very ruthless. You weren't you were uncompromising. Somebody feels completely defeated. Shattered confidence. Completely shattered confidence. You have a sense of joy. At the same time, you're not interested in inviting any kind of battles into your life. You don't want the fight anymore. You don't want the friction. You don't want the resistance. You're tired of the drama. You just want to give to Alliance. You want to invest into Alliance, into self-love, self-care. So many of the people around you are invested into the old world, into outdated thinking, unconsciousness. No willing to be conscious and you're just not wanting to invest in that anymore you have healed from uh one of the three archetypal wounds if not all of them shame betrayal and abandonment and you're no longer your sexual energy the tiger your sexual energy is no longer building in the same way you are moving in a new direction you know, I love this going into the water, the tiger going into the water, the water being above him. So higher states of emotion, cleaner states of emotion, higher realms of consciousness. Water is also consciousness, so higher consciousness. So you are creating because the water is now above the tiger. So you are investing into higher consciousness. You're investing your sexual creative energies into higher consciousness vibrations within your own life and you have proven everybody wrong i'm i feel like 
your life is successful. I feel like whatever you have done, you are being, you are successful and the people around you can see it. It's like their jaws are hanging open as they're watching you and you're just pretending you don't even see them, you don't even care, or even if you do see them, you wave at them all ha ha happily, hey, you know, and they're still just like, what the fuck? You know, you're like the black sheep, you're the scapegoat, you're the loser, and here you're the one to, you know, it's so true. One of the gifts that my adoptive mother gave me, and I will tell you this, she went to a high school reunion. She was in her mid-30s. I remember we went back to her little hometown where she grew up in Saskatchewan, and she went back and had a high, high school reunion. And when we were driving home, it was an awesome weekend. I got to play with all the kids that were the children of all the parents there that were, you know, high school kids with my with my adoptive mother when they were kids anyway it was it was cool I had so much fun it was a total blast anyway on the way home I'll never forget what she said to me and it made me think she said she was reflecting while she was driving she was reflecting and she was staring out of the highway and reflecting back to the reunion and she said isn't it interesting that all the popular people in the class who were the most popular, who everybody wanted to copy them and be like them, they never really went anywhere. And she said the people who were loners and who were quiet and who weren't popular, they were the ones that actually became something of themselves. And I'll never forget that. I see that even today. It's very true. It's very, very true. Okay. What is the Five of Wands creator? What is the Five of Wands? So yeah, and this Four of Cups here, the disconnect is what this world was with the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. That you have disconnected. You have disconnected from this energy within yourself. First and foremost, and then with this in, and then you have disconnected with this energy in all of your relationships. And people are shocked. Surprised. You have demonstrated an act of empowerment that nobody ever ever thought that you would ever accomplish. Oh, I just heard you've gone beyond the pale. You've gone beyond the pale. You have gone beyond the pale. What is the pale? The pale is the marker of the um, perimeter of the tribe. You ever see the movie The Village? That's like a, a demonstration of what I'm talking about is when the tribe that lives in a colony and they all tell the children, you know, nobody goes beyond this marker here, whatever this marker is, it's a little bush or it's a tree or it's maybe something they ha hammered into the ground. Nobody goes beyond this marker because if you do, you're outside the protection of the tribe. You've gone beyond the pale. You were in the outer, outer dimension where all the wild animals can eat you and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, in truth, when you go beyond the pale, you enter into sovereignty. You break free from the tribe. You come home to yourself. The tribe doesn't want that to happen because, not because they don't want you to succeed, but because they don't want to lose a member of their, of their tribe and lose power as a whole. That's why nobody wants to enter the promised land. Or I'll say very few. That's why very few people want to on, enter the promised land because you can't take your tribe with you. Entering the promised land is not a place. It's a state of being. It's, a rela it's an entering into a relationship with yourself that no one else can join you no one else can enter into that place. Not your husband, not your kids, not your parents, not your pastor, not your priest. 
Just you. You and the Creator. You and the high, the Holy Spirit of the Most High. Okay. Five of Wands. Yes, okay. So somebody feels unseen, unrecognized. They feel like they're being punished. <clears throat> Maybe they want to punish you. Maybe you want to punish them. What I'm feeling is, is they, they want to punish you. There's a lot of conflict going on within somebody. It's like they're playing poker. They keep their face, the poker face, went around you. They keep their hand very close to themselves. You know this. I'm feeling like this used to piss you off about this person. Well, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, actually, I actually just heard, why can't you just show up? Why don't we all just show up? Ace of Cups. They keep their hand very close to them, themselves. They would love an opportunity to talk to you. But they don't know how to find the balance to this unresolved imbalance of power because they themselves will lose power. They don't, they want to resolve this. Okay, they want to spiritually bypass this. They want to just spiritually bypass it. Can't we just ohm? Can't we just meditate over this? Can't we just fast? Let's just fast about this. Let's pray and fast. Then we'll go our own way and we'll come back and maybe in a year, maybe two years, and this issue will will have outgrown this issue. That's true. That's true. But you haven't overcome the issue. And it is going to resurface down the road. Like the Tibetan Book of the Dead says. What you resist, what we resist about ourselves becomes hostile towards us. That's the way it is. This is why the shamans would tell the children of the tribe when they when the children dreamt of monsters chasing them, that's what we're talking about. And the shamans would tell the children that would come crying with their with their parents to the shaman, my child's having nightmares. And the shaman would say, Oh, you're being chased by a monster in your dream? And the child, yeah, a monster, a big bad monster, or a big bad bear, or a big bad tiger, or something like that is chasing the child. And the shaman would tell them, you need to turn around and face this. Because when you face it, it'll shapeshift into something that's actually your friend. That's the same thing. They are still a child running from, running from themselves, running from their inner monsters. They have not yet developed the courage to face their monster to face their wild animal, their predator nature, whatever it is, that will then, as soon as they face it, it will then transform into their protector, their friend, a very intimate part of themselves. Instead, they would rather disconnect with you. Instead of knowing themselves, they would rather disconnect with you. And I'm feeling that you know this, and this is why you've made a clean cut. You know there's nothing, you know, this may not be illuminated dynamics, but I feel like you intuitively already know this. And this person is looking, or the both of you, but I'm feeling more about, this is more like this, this, this person's energy. This is a reveal of the other person's energy that you're not aware of. That you, that the, the other person is looking to leave home, leave this relationship, leave 
a state of mind within themselves, a comfort zone that they've had relative to you for a long time, and they they would rather leave than heal. But they don't understand they're going to encounter this again. Okay, the creator is asking me to bring in the story my grandmother told me. Okay, my, my biological grandmother told me this story when I was 19 and I met my biological family. And she told me a story about a man who was hitchhiking from one town to the next. And an old couple pulled up. They pulled their car and they, they it picked him up. And as he got into the back seat and put on his seatbelt, the wife, the husband pulled back onto the highway and the wife turned around in her chair and spoke to him. She introduced herself and she said, hi, uh, who are you? Where are you coming from? Where are you going? And he said, uh, hi, my name is Frank, he said, and I'm coming from the town back there and you know, I've been there for a little while and I'm heading off to the next town on, just uh, seeing the world, off to see the world. And she said, oh, that's nice. What did you think of the town back there? And he said, oh, he said, the people there, they weren't very friendly. And she said, oh, that's too bad. Well, you better watch out. You better be careful, she said, because the town that's coming up, they're not very friendly either. And she turned back around and faced ahead while they drove the rest of the way. So what that means is she saw that man's state of mind. He saw the world from the perspective of, of a victim. He saw the world as a predator and he as prey. He saw the world as... something that was that was part of something special that he was excluded from you see why she turned around like it's kind of she was when she asked him about what his experience was she wasn't really asking about his experience she was more asking about him what's your relationship with life what's your relationship with people what's your first go-to when you meet somebody, what do you look at? Do you go to their faults, their flaws, what you don't like, what you want to change, what you resist about the person? Do you focus only on that? So she's saying if, he, if you're not happy, if you met people back there that you thought were mean, and these are just people that don't know you, they have no reason to be mean to you, then where you go, you're going to meet people that are mean because it's your state of mind that's painting your perspective. So yeah, that's what I'm that's that's what I'm, what, what I am getting here is this person is painting their own perspective and they would rather run than know themselves. I'm getting that they want to develop themselves without knowing themselves and come and challenge you. Oh, do they not Oh God, you know, people can be really stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that creator. I'm, this is not a judgment call. This is just an observation. You know yourself and this person doesn't know themselves. So they don't know where their vulnerabilities are, but you do because you know yourself and you can see that they don't know themselves and they're going to come at you to fucking challenge you. Like, are you kidding me? You're like, bring it on. <laughs> I can just feel like you're sitting back, like, whether or not you, you wear cowboy boots, I just see you wearing jeans and cowboy boots, sitting back with your legs crossed and you're in your back and your hands folded behind your head, just like, yep, you can handle this. You can handle whoever this is because they haven't even really been born yet. They haven't really been born yet. And that's what I see is they're, they think they know who they are. <gasps> oh God. And what's on the bottom of the deck for the avian deck is the tower. Look at the thorns. Ooh. Big thorns. 
So with this person not wanting to, you know, you will meet with this person. You have no problem. You have a sense of disappointment that, 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 that this person would rather abandon the relationship than face themselves. But you know, that takes great strength. That takes the strength of a warrior, the strength of a shaman, the strength of a medicine healer, the strength of one who carries badger medicine, the strength of one who is clear, the strength of one who is in gnosis. When you can diagnose, you are in gnosis. Dia means apart and everywhere, and gnosis means gnosis, means knowledge. Diagnosis, diagnosis. Okay, you guys, I am going to leave this here. There's a tower coming for someone. I think that they are the tower. That's what I get. I don't feel like the creator is... Um, Oh, it's kind of like they're at war with themselves because of what they don't want to see. They're, they're taking the long way around rather than just going right through the center. They're taking the long way around. And that's the tower. Because they know that they're scared of you. They know that you're out of their league. They know they cannot fuck with you. They know they want to. <laughs> they want to. <laughs> Oh, but they know better. I feel like, uh... <laughs> yeah, I think they have felt your fight. I think they have felt they've been bitten by the badger before. Many of you who come to my channel carry badger medicine. I feel that often in the readings that many of the people that come to my channel are, carry badger medicine. Absolutely. You carry your own trauma, your own histories of darkness, your own relationship to the underworld. Some of you are intimate with it, some of you aren't. But coming to my channel is, is I feel, helps gives you the courage to develop the will and the relationship with your underworld so it can serve you. You know, Deepak Chopra said, he or she who is initiated into their shadow is not flawed, but is whole. Okay, you guys, I'm going to leave this reading here. This is a beautiful energy. You guys are beautiful, absolutely. And um, I'll see you guys in the next reading. I hope this reading is helpful and useful. And you guys take care. And I'll see you in the next reading. Alrighty.